obviously this shouldn't be a surprise, but I was still surprised. Uh, the source here, the sources here are Lewis Rossman and Samsung Mexico, and the headline is Carriers Block Mexican Phones. So there's some background here. Around a fifth of phones in Mexico get bought through the local gray market. Uh, these phones are not necessarily illegally obtained, but the sellers are not authorized and have imported devices that were originally intended for release in other markets. And they tend to sell these at a price that is well below the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Um, if you're wondering, this kind of gray marketing, so it's not the market and it's not the, you know, opposite of the market. I, don't, I think the term for that has changed. So yeah, I'm just, I, don't, I don't know. Whatever. The point is, it's kind of in between the legitimate market and the illegitimate market in that it's real goods. It's not necessarily stolen or, you know, obtained through nefarious means, a blackmail or whatever the case may be. But you might be going around intended routes for things. So a perfect example of this is something like the discount game keys or Windows keys that are accessible through certain gray markets where they will obtain them with actual money that goes to the actual developer. But a lesser amount of money because it was intended to be like a, a subsidized lower cost version of the software for, you know, a developing country, say, for example, not for someone who lives in, you know, the States or Mexico or Canada or, you know, whatever else. Uh, it's Regional pricing is pretty common. Yeah. And so... Um, one of the other major, major incentives for gray marketing, aside from regional pricing, is tariffs. So in those cases, um, you could have a real product, a real Intel CPU bought really, really from an Intel distributor, but bought in America and then smuggled through some, you know, nefarious means or even not nefarious, even just by, you know, carrying them on a boat, and nobody asked any questions. I don't know, probably something nefarious was involved, especially if we're talking about Brazil, which is where I'm going with this. But they could be smuggled into Brazil, where the tariffs on electronics are, I think, as high as like 100 plus percent, depending on the category, making you know a gaming computer, for example, an extreme extreme status symbol somewhere, somewhere, like, uh, somewhere like Brazil. So there's a strong incentive to gray market these products, buying them legitimately, but transporting them illegitimately so that they are somewhat affordable. Um, so anywho, we've got these gray market phones. In July, Motorola announced that phones imported through the gray market and activated in Mexico would be subject to remote disability after July 27th, making the phone completely useless except for emergency calls. Reportedly, they are planning to ident or they are identifying these phones via their IMEI number, which is a as, as far as I can tell, as far as I know, and I'm sh okay. I don't spend a ton of time hanging out on Russian hacker forums, so you'll have to forgive me if I if I am not up on the latest, um, you know, IMEI spoofing techniques. But as far as I know, there it, it is pretty much hardware, and there's not any kind of easy, convenient, accessible way to spoof an IMEI. Do you do you know is that is that true? Uh, I think you can, but I don't think it's like easy or accessible at all and i don't think it's bulletproof like you might be able to spoof it maybe though like the way that it appears in your software maybe. but my I, understanding I've, is it's pretty low level i've heard of it before but i don't know like i'm, I'm trying to look it up right now but i don't know how legitimate these things are float plane chat um, is saying it's hard but you can okay yeah yeah that, that was my understanding so, but well, it's been a long time yeah uh genesis describes it as doable but far beyond most people yeah like i don't think this is a thing that's going to be done widespread even at a scale like this like well yes and no i mean if one sometimes. fifth of yeah. the phones in a country yeah. just stopped working you don't think mobile repair shops you know those ones that are absolutely well, everywhere are going to figure out how to do this we're and talking about how this is a gray line too and some people in chat are pointing this out and i think this is true it is illegal i think wrong you can rewrite imeis on android devices um yeah but I, is it legal 
That I don't know. Also, how is that wrong? <laughs> Didn't we just say you could do it? Yeah, we know. Well, we well, they might be res- they might be behind. Maybe their internet oh, connection is, uh, is is not very good. Yeah. But um, anyway, the point is, it also depends on how they're handling this. I mean, what if Motorola's approach is to have just an allow list of IMEIs? Well, then, yeah, yeah sure, you'd spoof it or whatever, but that's not going to help. Yeah. You'd have to find the right one. Yeah, exactly. And if and if two IMEIs, um, if two sus. identical IMEIs show up, particularly on the same mobile network, <laughs> that's, that is yeah, definitely going to cause some problems. Yeah. So it's so it's not legal. So if they're if they're trying to like float in the gray space, that is as far as my understanding goes, a clearly illegal action. Got it. I think that would be like, ooh. We're getting into laws that I don't know, but I think that would be like changing the VIN on your car. Right. Like, I don't think you can just do that. Like, yeah, I know you can't do you that. You could, yeah, you could visually do it. Yes. But it's like not okay. It's definitely not okay. Yeah. So I think or it's like the changing same... the serial on a firearm or something like that. Like nothing would physically prevent you it's doable. from doing it. It's going to be hard to do convincingly, yeah. probably similarly to here. Yeah. And it's illegal. So it, you're not going to see a ton of it. Not legal advice. We are not lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> not financial advice either. Burn all your money. Wait, sorry. Not that, really not really just advice at all. Yeah, we, <laughs> this is not an advice show. That is not what the A in WAN stands for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody really knows what it stands for. No, it doesn't matter. It's as far canon is that it never stood for anything. <laughs> now get this. Samsung went even further and started disabling gray market phones retroactively. Oof. What? That sucks for the people that bought them. Uh, okay, this must be a typo because it says both companies offered affected customers a 30% discount on Motorola devices in Mexico, <laughs> but I'm sure that's just Motorola and maybe Samsung also offered some kind of maybe. discount. Maybe. Uh, Oppo and Xiaomi also said they would block gray market phones in Mexico, but it's unclear whether they followed through. Interesting. Now... One of the motivations that, you know, my my imagination could conjure up for something like this might be that this was due to government pressure, because otherwise, why Mexico? Why all these manufacturers? Why now? Like, maybe this is one of those things where, okay, organized crime is involved in the, mm. in the, 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 the acquisition and resale. And, yeah. and you know, the, the, any money spent on these gray market phones is going straight into the cartels or whatever the case may be. But actually, the Mexican government um, has ordered manufacturers to stop disabling regular phones and called for the creation of a working group to address the gray market problem without violating consumers rights because the thing here is that the only people who are being harmed by the manufacturer's actions are the buyers of these devices not the people who profited from it and if you expect the average consumer to understand that the phone that they're buying, which looks exactly the same as the other phone just like it, other than it has a slightly more different serial number that is not authorized for use in this country, if you expect them to understand or even care that that's wrong compared to saving 100 bucks or whatever it is, I just, I think it's kind of ridiculous. I think it's, I think basically all you're doing is making yourself look bad and you are not harming the sellers. I mean, in the long term. Hold on though. One of the next lines, uh, cause I was just reading one of the sources here is like Samsung Mexico. And I was just reading this and I was like, this doesn't line up with what we're saying at all. But one of the next lines is yes. the Mexican government has ordered manufacturers to stop disabling uh, irregular phones. I said that you weren't listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> Neat. I was probably reading it. Anyway, cool. uh, getting ahead of uh, moving ahead again. So, um, so the, the, in the long term, I could see this hurting the resellers once people kind of figure out that these phones might not work. Uh, but unless they're disabling them immediately, I could still see them, you know, selling these devices, not 
you know, connected to a mobile network, just kind of going like, okay, yeah, look, look, it's, it's working. Take, take it home and go taking people's money. Like I, it, you're, I think you're just going to end up with regular consumers being scammed. Um, now, Samsung claims they will no longer block these phones and they are willing to work with the government on a solution. Leading us to our discussion question here, which is, what's the right way for companies to deal with gray market devices? I, I don't know if I would say no longer. Uh, they said they're going to suspend blocking them. <laughs> Hilarious. So they're, they're, they're pausing. They're, they're pausing and allowing uh, some work to happen with the Mexican government to see if they can come to some form of agreement. And it sounds like if they don't, they'll probably continue. But they didn't say that part because they probably didn't want to like put a threat out there. But the word suspend to me sounds like there's a resume on the other end of it. So, yeah, I'm not sure. So what should they do about gray market devices? I have an idea. How about nothing? How about f off? <laughs> How about if you can afford to sell it at that price in, you know, wherever a stand, then you just sell it at that price. There's an idea. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice. Like, I, I, I don't know. It, 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 this just, it just reminds me of like region very, locking. Yeah, it's a very consoles and, and games. And, and like, you know, obviously the, in the early days, the region locking wasn't very sophisticated. It's, a, you know, a, yeah. a plastic notch that Flip you can just switch. sand down or whatever the case may be. But I guess now that we've reached the point where the mechanisms for enforcement are so sophisticated, we've reached the point where we kind of have to say, hey, actually, no. That's not okay. Well, you, you can't be you can't be bricking manufactured <laughs> goods just because it went from one country to another country in a way you didn't like. I'm sorry, but I just don't really. Um, yeah, I don't I just like can't the really bricking. Support that. I, I I think I could potentially support them wanting to do something about it, um, but bricking the phones is really aggressive towards people that just want your phone, not the resellers doing the actual bad stuff. Um, because like, I can understand like they, they might not be making money in some of these markets like at all. And those markets might be supported through the sales in other markets. Like we don't necessarily know how their business is being handled. Um, but yeah, breaking all the phones is not cool. I mean that, you know, raises another interesting question. Like should, should we then, okay, should, should I, should I be supportive of them selling devices at cost into a developing market, knowing that I'm helping subsidize that. You don't have to be supportive of it. So then if I'm not supportive of it, then I guess I would take my stance, which is sell the device for whatever, you know, your cost is plus some margin that you presumably need to make and then f off and don't tell me where I can or can't use it. Fair enough. I, either way, I don't support them bricking the phones. I think that's a... And I don't Dumb really, approach. I don't really see an alternative. What, what is the alternative? Because anything. In Brazil, we actually pay more. That's because of your. Yeah. That's because of your, your government. Tax. Yeah. That's not the company. Yeah. Yeah. That's so to be clear, we are not talking about, um, situations where the increase in cost to the consumer, the increase in price to the consumer is because of, uh, import tariffs or taxes. Yeah. That's on the government and, you know, that's, that's always going to, that's always going to be something that smugglers are going to try to get around. And that's always going to be a certain kind of gray market. We're talking about situations where the manufacturer has their own set regional pricing that they are trying to prevent people from working around it's super, by breaking devices. It's super visible in video games. Yeah. It's a big thing for a while. People, people would like sell accounts like free accounts that were authenticated in countries where they would get the games cheaper because you'd pay money for the account, but then all the games that you'd buy after that would be cheaper. Like there was all this like crazy stuff going on. <laughs> um, there, there's, yeah, it's, it's weird. I remember hearing, I don't remember what game it was, but it was some online game that required a subscription and you could go into the online dashboard and update your address to one of the countries that had a, a lower subscription rate uh subscribe with uh like an american or whatever else credit, credit card, card yep. and everything just you switch your address to there subscribe you buy like however many months at a time 
and then you just change your address back and everything's fine. Like they didn't have any authentication at all. I've had a couple people just that uh, whose comments I've seen. I don't even remember emails, forum posts. I don't know, uh, but have brought up that they subscribe to YouTube Premium in a different region, and it costs like two dollars a month or something yeah. like that. And you'd yeah. think a company with the technical would resources of Google would be able to detect something like that pretty easily, especially because I know that when someone doesn't want you to buy something from a different region, they. F- can stop you like do you have any idea how hard it was to buy a valve index yeah i remember this valve yeah. was serious business you are not buying an index if you are not in you know america or wherever the other regions that they launched it in were and it's like well i'm not going to take no for an answer i need an index i have to f- <laughs> review the thing so i will obtain one but the only way i was able to do it i tried shipping to an american address with a canadian card I tried shipping to a Canadian address with a USD card. I tried shipping to an American address with a USD card that was issued by a Canadian bank, and they wouldn't even allow that. I was paying in US dollars and shipping to a US address. Why do they care? And it wouldn't go through. And ultimately, you know how we did it? I've gotten around a few of these, but no. Uh, we, ha- we had John. We had our, yeah. our writer who lives in, Car- uh, I was going to say in Carolina, but I'm sure it, and I'm, sh- I, I'm sure that that it would won't. be very offensive. Yeah. Uh, well, I, well, I didn't want to get super specific, yeah. but that's fine. It's a state, North Carolina. He lives in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, I, I know there are two Carolinas. Just chill. Relax. Yeah, north it's and just, east. Yeah, it's just like East Arkansas and West Arkansas. Does he know American geography or does he not? <laughs> You'll never know. It's a stalemate. Um, <laughs> someone in chat, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, don't forget about don't forget about red Texas and blue Texas. <laughs> There's Austin and Dallas and the rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I know the Alaska thing. Wait, which hand is it? Is it this one? It's like the, the state of Alaska is the shape of the back of your hand when you do this with your fingers. Oh, okay. But I don't remember which hand it is. Uh, well, it's... Hold on, can I see? Uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, it's that one. There you go. I just know the shape of Alaska. That's uh, not because I, like, remember which one it is. Why uh, do you not know the shape of Alaska? It's attached to Canada. Well, it has two thingies, and I just didn't remember which one was longer. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> anywho... As a Texan, this is correct. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> right. How to deal with this. I don't think there's a good way to deal with this. I, I just don't think there's any way around it. I think the answer is give yeah. up. Just don't break phones. Yeah, stop it. Breaking phones sucks it's for everyone. It's time to stop. You're making e-waste and... Bothering your customers. Stop. Who, yeah. Who did buy your product. Yeah. You actually did sell that product and yeah. you make money. So, if you didn't make enough money... I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Set a higher price next time. I don't care. Deal with it. 